fellow travelers, this is what you want. This is what you need. This is the path to true happiness and wisdom. For Anthony Bourdain, ever the intrepid adventurer, he took us to parts unknown. No location too remote, no dish too exotic. Eating bugs? That is so last network. But his final destination was tragic. World-renowned chef, best-selling author, award-winning host of Parts Unknown, and our friend, Anthony Bourdain, has died. A hotel room in France where he was filming an upcoming episode of his award-winning CNN show. The part we may never know is why, at age 61, this globe-trotting superstar appears to have taken his own life. He had a dream job. I try to avoid a social conscience. I try to avoid politics. I think that it's, I don't think that I have the gravitas. And he was great at it. I have a, just a sense that I'm a profoundly lucky guy. I first met Bourdain in Lebanon back in 2006. Bourdain happened to be there filming his show No Reservations. The rest of us were there to cover the war. I'm not Ted Koppel, you know. <laughs> uh, war coverage, uh, serious correspondence, that's just not... If anything, I thought it was uh, ill-suited to the material, to say the least. The experience gave him a new appreciation for comfort food, dished out by U.S. Marines who finally got his team out. Tuna noodle casserole. You know, it's a joke dish, synonymous with awfulness. Now, a welcome sign, a, a sign that things were normal, that, that we were going home. That ability to use food to find empathy, common ground, with people of vastly different experience is what people loved about Anthony Bourdain. Today, President Obama looked back on the extraordinary meal he shared with Bourdain in Vietnam. I will walk you through. You're gonna have to walk me through this. A meal and a man the former president won't soon forget. Tweeting today, this is how I'll remember Tony. He taught us about food, but more importantly, about its ability to bring us together to make us a little less afraid of the unknown. We'll miss him. And as head chef at Les Halles, he was equally blunt. I don't get these special appetizers in 9.12 seconds. My head is going to explode. He dared to reveal trade secrets that might make you think twice about dining out. When his book, Kitchen Confidential, became a bestseller in 2000, he gave Nightline a tour of his kitchen. You feel like you're in a noisy, tobacco stain loud, uh, crowded, um, rather exuberant uh, place, just like in Paris, uh, eating exactly the same kind of food. And uh, so uh, that's what people are looking for when they come here, and that's exactly what they get. So it's about not just doing well, cooking well. It's cooking well always, always being on time, always being ready, always making it the same way. Among the trade secrets he revealed, don't order fish on a Monday because it won't be fresh off the boat. Check out the bathroom in your favorite restaurant. If it's dirty, the kitchen probably is too. And never order Eggs Benedict for Sunday brunch. In fact, steer clear of Sunday brunch altogether. Many restaurants save up their table butter. They'll heat it up, strain out the cigarette butts and the bread crumbs, and use that for the holidays. You're the guy who wrote the book about don't eat in the restaurant if the bathroom is dirty. And now you're the guy that goes off to Uzbekistan where there right. really is no bathroom. And the Uzbekistan one? Well, I was so up. wrong about so many things, you know. Um, I regret saying you should check out the bathroom and if the bathroom's filthy. So many of the best meals of my life for the last seven years have been in, in, in absolutely septic environments with chickens and, and pigs running around on the floor. Case in point, a meal he had with Bushmen in Namibia, an ostrich egg omelet cooked on the ground along with the anus of a warthog. This is one time where well done is eminently desirable. But no, this Hershey Highway is served al dente. Sweet. Not something he'd ever have served at Les Halles. Lamb chops, but I like them medium well. Well doneers, uh, used to hate them, but, but uh, they pay to eat our garbage. You know, they want the, the toughest, oldest, nerviest, most unlovely steak that we have. And they are least likely to notice uh, when we give it to them. I mean, they want carbonized the shoe leather. Uh, most restaurants are only too happy to give it to them. Do you miss being a chef? 
I miss sitting at the bar after work, having served 300 meals. Hey, Roti Daniel. You know exactly how well you did. You know, your fellow professionals know you did, you were on your game. 300 meals went out, nothing came back. Your vegetables, au jus. How has travel changed you? Having seen and, and fallen in love with, uh, you know, Asia and South America, um, a, a lot of my old life, uh, a lot of what we take for granted in America is very flat to me. He knew he was living the good life, but having struggled with addiction, he acknowledged his demons as well. I'd like to be happy. I should be happy. I have, you know, incredible luck. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to, you know, look out the window and say, hey, life is good. And you don't. No. Bourdain is the second high-profile suicide this week, just days after designer Kate Spade. According to the CDC, suicide rates have been rising in every state but Nevada. Bourdain's mother tells the New York Times his close friend told her he had been in a dark mood these past couple of days. But to the outside world, there was little sign Bourdain was at risk. France was Bourdain's culinary home. This was the cuisine that launched him, and it was one he clearly enjoyed. Sunday. His CNN show recently featured a French meal in Lyon, prepared and served in the old style. I will never eat like this again in my life. Chef, merci. The, the meal of my life. Tonight, for countless Bourdain fans, there's that same sense of appreciating something magnificent and at the same time knowing we'll never see it again. Our thanks to David. And if you are one of the ones struggling with dark thoughts of your own, please dial the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. It's 1-800-273-8255. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.